the greatest ironic things in the world is that anybody ends up in hell. The reason I say that is because it's ironic that God has made the way to have eternal life so free. He's made it so free, He sent His only begotten Son because He so loved the world. He sent His only begotten Son to redeem it from all sin. Notwithstanding, it is ironic that so many go to hell. We, we see it in the Bible when Jesus says, Few shall be saved. Not many, but few. The majority of people that live in Spokane, that live in the United States, that live in the world, will most likely end up in hell. Not because God has made it too hard. Not because it's not freely given. From God's side, He says He freely justifies the wicked. God offers free grace, free forgiveness to even the worst sinner. So why do so many end up in hell then if God is so willing to give salvation free? Why are so many lost on the day of judgment? Well, you see, His forgiveness is conditional. It's a relationship. He requires something of you. You must repent. You must stop loving your own life more than anything else in the world. I mean, it's true. You live for your pleasures. You live for what makes you feel good. Amen. Amen. That's your philosophy is me first. You have a me first philosophy. Thank God that God doesn't have a me first philosophy because He would never have come down from heaven. He would never have come down among us and endured the ridicule of human beings, endured being murdered by those that He created to save us. And make no, no mistake, there are some many here whose hearts are in a state of enmity before God. And you would murder Him all over again if He came among us because He demands your life and you demand to have your own life. You demand that nobody take your will away, that you want to live the way that you want to live, you want to listen to the, whatever music you listen to, think what you want to think, say what you want to say, watch what you want to watch, and you don't want anybody coming to take that right away from you. But I'm telling you that God has a right to your life. He's your creator. Without Him, you could do nothing. He has a right to dictate. He's a loving dictator, and He has a right to command His creation to love each other. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about walking with God. We're talking about walking in love. That means you men, you stop looking with lust at other men's wives. You stop being covetous. You stop having premarital sex. You, you stand up and be a man. What a man is supposed to be. A man is not supposed to go around using women for sexual pleasure. That is wrong. That is sin. Stand up and be a man. God commands you to repent. God commands men everywhere to repent. God is angry with sin every day. You know why he's so angry with sin? Why is so passionate that men repent? Because he's such a loving God, he hates sin. A loving God hates to look down and see a baby's murdered for convenience sake. A little baby is the most precious thing in the world. Innocent. It's done no wrong, and yet women in this town have murdered their unborn children in the matter of convenience. Why? Because they were out sinning. They were out fornicating. So the sin didn't start at abortion. It started because they were having premarital sex. They were crossing the lines of conscience. They were crossing the lines of love. And they added sin unto sin. And what about all the men that contributed? Do you think that God 
God, a holy God, will hold them guiltless that have been a part of the murder of an innocent baby? He will not. But again, as I started, God freely gives. He will freely give His grace if you offer up your life. Put yourself on the altar. Cast away every sin. You should fall at the feet of Christ and weep. And the fact that you don't shows how cold, how lifeless, how wicked your heart is. That you can't be sorry for your sins before God. The fact that you're not sorry for sin, you're not sorry enough to stop it, shows that your hearts are wicked. A gracious God is willing to forgive the worst sin, but you won't give it up. You won't give up those sins because you love them, because your hearts are full of lust. You won't give up your life. And God will not hold you guiltless on the day of judgment. But if all it takes is a willing heart, a heart that's willing to part from sin, to lay yourself down and say, Jesus Christ, I love you. You died for me. I will live for you. He offers it freely. He can cleanse the darkest heart. That's why we're out here. We don't want so many to go to hell. We want all men, just like God's desire, the desire of His heart, is that all men would repent. All men would come to Him. All men would receive His grace and forgiveness. That's why we're out here. Because we want you to experience the grace and forgiveness of God. You're not good people. You're not good enough to go to heaven. <laughs> your life is an expression of your heart. And how have you lived your life? Looking with lust, committing adultery, lying, stealing, lusting after filthy music, filthy movies. The language that comes out of your mouth is very revealing about where your heart is. And that's what God looks at. He looks at the heart. Where has your heart led you? What kind of things has your heart led you led you to? You know that it's led you to sexual corruption, sex outside of marriage. You know that it's led you to lust after R-rated movies. You know the language that comes out of your mouth. It's not wholesome. You know the type of jokes that you think are funny, the innuendos. You know that your thought life is impure. But God knows everything. He has an all-seeing eye. An all-seeing eye. The eye of the Lord is everywhere, beholding the evil and the good. And there is a day there is a day when you will stand before God and give an account for the way that you lived your life. And he says, how will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? God gives so great a salvation. But people don't want it like... You hand out a tract. You hand out a tract that's full of the life of God, full of His Word and people cast it to the ground as worthless. That was the grace of God that that track ended up in your hand. That was the love of God reaching out, trying to befriend you. And what do you do? You throw it down and trample it under your feet. I'm urging every one of you that can hear my voice, throughout eternity, this will echo in your ears throughout eternity if you don't do it. Repent or perish. Repent or perish. Jesus said, repent or perish. How many sinners, this might be kind of a harsh statement, but how many sinners are now in hell with this echoing through their mind? Repent. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. 
How, how many people are down there even now and it's echoing through their mind, grace is free, the free grace of God. They all talked about the love of God and here I am, I'm, I'm in hell, I didn't repent and now I can't get out, I'm stuck here. Somebody help, a drink of water, a drop of water. Though they cry throughout eternity, no one will come and give even a drop of water. If you go to hell, it will be the most hopeless, hopeless thing. It is such a place of despair. I know because God let me feel what it's like to be under His judgment. He let me feel it so that I would have grace to come out and plead with you, plead with you to turn from sin, to turn to Christ and receive that grace that's so free. Receive that forgiveness that's so free. And He will not forgive. He will not give eternal life to those who will consume it on themselves, who will continue to live for the pleasures of this life, who will continue to live for themselves, who continue to be a God unto themselves. He will not give eternal life to those people. He will give it to the humble that are willing to give themselves away to Him, to be used as He sees fit, to be willing to be fashioned into a vessel of holiness and love instead of selfishness and self-consumption and self-indulgence. And America is a self-indulgent nation. I'm not preaching that it's necessarily wrong to go and eat a hamburger at Red Robin, but how much money pours into that place There's no attention given to the fact that people are perishing in their sins and going to hell. How much time and energy is spent in this town keeping these bars open, these wicked drinking establishments, and yet people on every side are going to hell. Your priorities are backwards. Your entertainment is first. You are first, and it should be the other way over, and God is last, but God should be first. God should be first. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. It's foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us who have found eternal life, we're willing to die for it. We're willing to live for it, because we love God. We know God. God with a whole heart. He doesn't want half your heart. He wants all of it, all of your heart. And the Bible proclaims that you must be born again. See, the human heart exists in a state of depravity. The human heart is depraved. It has no love of God in it. It's true. You know, it's kind of a test. If you love somebody, the things that they command you to do, you care about. If you love somebody and you find that you're offending them, you'll change. All, all relationships work that way. If you love somebody, you live to please that person. So here we have God's Word. And God's Word says things like this. Be holy in all manner of conversation. How many of you, compelled by the love of God, will stop cussing? The fact that you don't proves my point that you don't have the love of God in your heart. How many of you, if you hear this commandment, Jesus said, if you look with lust, if you just look with lust at another woman or another woman looks with lust at another man, you commit adultery in your heart. How many of you are compelled by your love to God to stop doing that? And my point is, your heart is depraved. You don't have the love of God. That's why you continue to sin. If you loved God, you would stop. But that right there should be a motivation to stop sinning. But God so loved you in spite of your wickedness, in spite of every terrible, vile thing you've ever done, the 
God would cleanse you, God would forgive you, God would take you, though the world would consider you a loser, God would take you in and make a son, make you his son. It says the Spirit of God comes into those who repent, those who are born again, and we cry, Abba Father, that means we have a new father, we have a heavenly father, a relationship with the God that made us. And some of you, actually most of America, is trading the relationship they can have with God to have a relationship with sin, with R-rated movies, with pornography. When you come up before God in the judgment, it will be found that you loved your entertainment more than you loved God. How will it go with you on the day of judgment when in your heart you love self-indulgence and entertainment more than you love God. But really, your whole life was all about you. It was all about you gratifying the lusts of your own flesh. Most of you, I know it's true, you were living just for the gratification of your own flesh. That's your cause. That's your cause, living to gratify your own selfish heart. That's why there's so much sin in the world, because the human heart is depraved. The human heart, people live for the pleasures of the flesh. That's why there's the perversions of premarital sex. That's why there's the perversion of homosexuality. That's why people get 80 stations on the TV and sit there and watch it, watch all these vain shows that don't edify they're worthless all they do is thrill the flesh you live for the flesh the Bible tells you that if you live after the flesh you will die see God's cause is a much greater cause than your entertainment God's cause is to live for love love your neighbor as you love yourself the world is going to hell all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and if you were a loving person, you would take up the, cro the, the cause of Christ and live for Him and live to destroy sin and to save sinners, to pull men from the flames. Some of you might say, well, I don't have love in my heart like that. But God, in His salvation, will put that love there. He will meet you wherever you're at. It doesn't matter where your heart, at, heart is. Your heart is to pray before God, but God can do a renewing work. God can restore. God has a promise to restore even the wickedest sinner. But you see, that fact will condemn most of you. Because what it tells you is that you could have God's grace wherever you're at. And if you neglect it, if you cast it off, if you throw away the grace of God and continue to live your own life and be obstinate and live in your rebellion and continue to live for yourselves, you will perish. You will perish. That's why we're out here. We're warning people in love. Repent so that sin is not your ruin. You're guilty. God is just. He's a just judge. So he will punish sin. Uh, great. Pre preach on. Preach on. Thank you. Preach on. Thank you so much. Thanks for the encouragement. It's so encouraging to see some. Yes. They've accepted him by faith. They've, they've turned from their sins. God will do this freely. Freely for you if you will turn. I'm urging every one of you, turn from sin. 